Hello everyone, welcome back to Shawcode. In this video, we're going to be creating our own project and what we're going to be making is we're going to be making a shopping list. So we're going to be combining everything we've been learning through the past few tutorials into one project and then eventually in the next video, we're going to be compiling that into an Android application so we're going to be able to run it on our phones. Anyway, I'm just in an empty Python file here. So we have um, just tutorial.py and then we've also got my.kv, so we've got a Python file and a kv file. So the first thing we're going to want to do is import the app class. So from kv.app import app. And then and then from there we can just create the my app class. So class my app. And it inherits from app. And then it, we have a build method and itself. And then from here we can just return, return zero. And then my app dot run. This is just our standard boilerplate code that we write in every tutorial. But now we're going to want to import box layout and we're going to be using the box layout as our like as our base layout for everything that's going to go on there. So we're going to want to go from kv.uix.boxlayout import box layout. There we go. And here we can just do class uh call it root widget and it can inherit from box layout and it can just pass for the moment. So we've got our box layout there. And from here, what we're going to do is going to move into the KV file and we're going to select the root widget. So this root widget is the, is the layout. It's our base widget that we are going to return down here and let's return root widget here. So cause it's box layout, we want to have an orientation of vertical. So my plan is for this app, what we're going to have is we're going to have a box layout, which is what we've got here. And inside that, we've got the sort of the header where the title's going to be, where the add button is going to be, and where the uh, input field is going to be. And then below that, we can have our actual list with the content on it. So for the title sort of header thing, we're going to have a box layout. And then below that, we'll have a recycle view. So let's make the uh, top header, whatever you want to call it. So we can have a box layout and the orientation is also going to be vertical. Vertical. And then we're going to want to set the size hint. So we're going to want the size hint to take up the entire, the entire width, but we're only going to want it to take up a quarter of the height of the entire screen. So we can have 100% on the width and 25% of the height. Then from there, we can have a label and it can just say text uh, shopping list. And then we can have size hint and it's going to take up the entire width of the box layout. And then here we'll have it 30% of the height of this box layout. So the height of this label is going to be 30% of this box layout, which is 25% of the entire screen. So it's going to be 30% of 25% of the screen. If you don't really follow what we're doing right now, don't worry, you'll see it once we um, run the application. So now we've got our title. We're going to want another box layout inside a box layout. And this is going to have our button to add some an item to the shopping list as well as the input field where we're going to write down the items of our shopping list. So this time the orientation is going to be horizontal and we'll have a button and then its size can be, the width is going to be 25% and the height is going to be, give it 100% of the, 100% of this box layout and the text can be add and we're not going to add the on press event for the moment because we're going to add some stuff to that later, but we can just, we can just leave this button here for the moment. And then we'll have a text input and then we'll just have multi line is false. Okay. Now that we've sorted out the header, we're going to actually make the, um, we're going to make the recycle view. Now we're going to need to go back to our Python file. And then from here, we're going to create the recycle view. So we can do from kv.uix.recycle view import recycle view. And then we can have class list, list widget. Yeah, we can just call it list widget. Then it can inherit from recycle view. And then here we can just let it pass. We can come back to this later. So moving it back over to the KV file. We've sorted out the header, let's deal with the recycle view now. 
So we called it a list widget, so we can say list widget. And its view class is going to be label. So we're going to have a list of labels, which is going to contain all our items of a list. So it's going to be label and the orientation can be vertical. And we'll have a recycle box layout. And I'm just going to insert some styles here that we've used beforehand. So just copy what I do here. It will just make the recycle view look a lot nicer. So yeah, you can just copy it in like this and tab it correctly. And now our recycle view will look a lot nicer. So that's going to be it for our KV file. So if we run this now, we can see we get this application. So just putting it side by side here, I'll go through what we've done with the uh, KV file in comparison to the app. So as you can see, uh, we have our entire app is based on this um, box layout right here and the orientation is vertical. And then inside that we have two different widgets. We have a box layout and a list widget. And this box layout is going to take up 100% of a width, but 25% of a height. You can see all of this up here is taking up 25%. And then it's taking up 100% of a width. And then inside that box layout, we have a label. Um, and the text is shopping list, so that's up here. It takes up 100% of the width and 30% of the height of this box layout. And then inside that, we have another box layout, which is these two widgets. And then we have the button which is 25% of the width and 100% of the height. And then next to that, we just have a text input. And then below, we have our recycle view. Um, obviously, it's not showing anything at the moment because we don't have any items in the recycle view, which is what we're going to work on now. We're going to start adding some functionality to this because if I type in something now, nothing happens. So now let's add some functionality to it. So now we're going to deal with object properties. I've covered this in one of the videos before. It is quite complicated, so try and follow along the best you can, but if you are confused at any point, you can just take a look at the object property tutorial I did a few videos ago. But anyway, what we're going to want to do now is do from kivi.properties import objects property. And basically, in summary, objects properties basically just allow us to link properties from the kivi file. So, for example, if we wanted to get the text, we'd use an object property to link the text of a, the text property of a widget in the Kivi file into the Python file. So we want to get this button as an object property. So we can just call this, um, input button. And we can set it equal to an object property and just have that as none. We'll also want the input the input field where we write stuff so we can call this input content and that can be an object property and none and then finally we'll want the output content so that's going to be our our recycle view so we can just say output content object property none so input button is going to be linked to this button right here. Input content is going to link to this text field right here. And then output content is going to link to this recycle view down here. Moving back to the KV file, we're going to want to create some variables here. So we can have input button and that is input button. Then we'll have input content, input content, and then output content, output content. So basically this input button variable right here will link to this object property in the Python file. And then any widget in this KV file with the ID input button will be linked to this object property called input button. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to come down to this button. So in this button down here, we want to create an ID and we'll set the ID to input button. So this ID here is linked to this here because it's called input button and this has the ID of input button and this variable right here links to this variable here and it's an object property. So we're basically creating a link to the button. And now we're going to do the same thing for the text field and the output recycle view. So we can just go into the text input and then we'll have an ID input content. And then we'll come down to the uh, recycle view and we can have an ID of output content. There we go. 
So now that we've done that, what we want to do is we want to come up into the recycle view um, class and start adding some functionality here. So we can just do define underscore underscore init and then self and then star star keyword args. And if you don't know what this star star quags is, I've got a video on it. You can check it out up in one of these i cards here. But anyway, once we've done that, we can do super dot underscore underscore init. So this calls the init method of the recycle view. And then here we're going to want to pass in star star quags again. And then we're going to want to have a list called self dot items. This list is going to hold the strings that we input into the input field. Uh, it's just going to be empty for the moment. And now we're going to create a method called update. And basically what this is going to do is when we press the add button, when we press the button to add something to the, to the recycle view, this function is going to be called and it will basically update the recycle view to make sure the item is displayed. And then we can do self.data and it's going to be list comprehension. So if you don't know what that is, you can check out one of the videos. I've got a video on it, but basically we're going to go for item in self.items. So for, for every item in this list, we're going to create an item in the recycle view and we're going to set its text property to item and we're going to cast it to a string. So say we have like 50 items in this list, we're going to iterate over it create 50 items in the recycle view and we're going to set the text property of those items in the recycle view to the items in the list. That was very complicated but you'll understand once we run the application. And now down here in the root widget we're going to create a method and it's going to add the item to the recycle view. So we're going to call define add item self. Firstly, here we're going to get the text of the input field. So it'll be self.inputcontent.text. So that basically just accesses the text of the input field. And we're going to create a variable called formatted. And it's going to be equal to that text. But we're going to create an F string. And then we can have a new line. And we're also going to have a bullet point pasted in here. So we can have like a bullet point list. Um, this just formats the text so, it, so it'll look nice. Um, you'll see what it looks like when we run the application. Um, but basically, once we've formatted the text, what we can do, we're going to get self.outputContent. So this is going to be the recycle view. And then we're going to say dot .items. So we're referring to this list right here. So we're accessing that list right there. And then we're going to append this formatted string. So we're going to get the text of the input field and then format it and then add it to this list right here and then we're going to do self.outputContent.update so this will call this method and then it'll basically just display all the items in the recycle view and then we can just do self.inputContent.text equals nothing so we're basically just going to clear the input content and then also up here we can just do an if self.inputContent.text does not equal an empty string and then just tab that like that. So what this if statement does is it just checks to see if the text field is empty. So we can only add items to the recycle view if the input field has some text in it. And if it doesn't, the button won't work. Then back to my.kv, we can do where's the button. So we can do on press, we can do root dot add item. We finished the application now. So if we run it, we can see we got a shopping list. We can type stuff in here so we can add like, I don't know, bread. We can press add and we get the list here. We can also have, um, I don't know, eggs. Then we can add more stuff and press add and there we go. And we can scroll through it nicely. So there we go, we've created a shopping list. So I'll just explain the functionality right here. So obviously once we've got our object properties linked, We've got the add item function here on press. We're going to call this method right here when we press this button. And when we press it, it's going to check if the input field is empty. So the input field isn't empty, so we can continue on here. And then it's going to format this string to add a new line to it. So it goes on to the next line. Then it's going to append it to this string. Then it's going to call this update method. 
and then this is going to do list comprehension through this string. So for every item in this list, it's going to create a label, and then it's going to set the text of that label to the current item in the string, and then it'll just clear the input field right there. So there we go, we've created a shopping list. This was quite complicated, so if you have anything you don't understand, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Next video, we're going to be compiling this to a Android application and then we can run it on our phone. So I'll be showing you how to convert a Python file to an APK file, which you can install on your Android phone. Anyway, that's it from me. Cheers and goodbye.